What is going on, IK fam? B, and I'm back again today for another dope sauce IK video. Always excited. Now, this video is going to be some, something special because finally, jumping is somewhat relevant in Infinity Kingdom. And we're going to talk and show you all of the ways on how you can maximize your jumper, um, how to progress it appropriately, uh, how to do some of the min-maxing that we've talked about before. In addition, when can you take your jumper to a new server? What are the deadlines? What are the requirements? And then if you want to do any spending on the account, we're going to do a little bit of talking about that as well. Now, before we get started, as always, if you enjoy the content, sub to the channel, hit that notification bell to get updates, throw us a thumbs up for the likes. And then in the description down below, there will be a link to download Infinity Kingdom for anyone that's interested in checking that out. It also helps support us as a channel and a content creator for the game. And then there will be official Infinity Kingdom resources below that. Also, if this video is up until about April of 2021 and you're watching it, we are doing a jump project ourselves. So if you're interested in checking that out, you can always join our Discord server, which is there as well. Now, with all of that out of the way, let's dive right in. So, let's start first off with what are the requirements. So, I'm here currently in, or I should say on, my S27 account. Let's take a look at what the requirements are if we want to move a jumper account to a newer server. So, S28 is the newest server right now that's open. It's been open almost 24 hours. Now, let's say I click relocate. It'll tell me here the requirements. I have to be equal to or less than level 8 for castle. I own enough portals, troops are idle, city and troops are not in battle status, no alliance garrisons in the city, up to two characters in the target world, and I'm not in any alliances. If you see me click on this, it'll say my castle level exceeds eight. So that means that I have to be, as again, at level eight or lower for my castle level. Now, let's go to S28 and show you two things here. The first thing we're going to talk about is what chronicle level do you have to be at? And then what's the average power that your jumper should be at before you go? So before, back in the S6, S8 beta days for the first eight servers, right, before global release on January 28th of 2021, always nice to spit some facts out, the time between Chronicle 3 finishing uh, and opening from the new server was about two and a half to three and a half days, right? So enough time had gone by to where you just would have had to hit a higher level for your jumper account for it to really be worthwhile. And the investment was a little bit more at the time. Now, because of the fact that servers are opening up a little bit quicker, right? So let's see now. So you had Chronicle 1 started on March 30th, 14 UTC. Chronicle 3 finished at 4.1.2. So this is about, what do we have here? A day and a half um, that we did because we went from, let's see here, right? 30. 31 going into the next day 4-1 but keep in mind it finished at 2-4 so this is about a day and a half right you're looking at about what 34 hours give or take so uh, I'm sure my math is not accurate there completely but it's it's opening up a lot faster um, right before it would take a lot longer and uh, again you just had to wait a little bit while now s27 opened up theirs and s26 i want to say they did theirs at about 30 hours 28 to 30 hours so it just depends on the servers but so far right i would say anywhere from like that 27 28 hour to probably that day and a half range is how soon chronicle 3 is completing for you to then jump now keep in mind you only have until uh where is it here counter attack 2 so when Counter-Attack 2 finishes, that is the window. The window is from the completion of Counter-Attack 2 to after Expel Gnomes finishes for those couple days, or depending on how long it takes, that you have to jump to that new server. Once Chronicle 6 is completed, your window is done. All right, then you'd have to try and shoot for another new server. Uh, now, let's take a look at the average power we recommend players being at. So average power is going to be at and let's just go ahead and take a look here at the top 100 okay so top 100 for the low ball is 90k now let's take a look at blue 75k 68k and 73 this shows arguably the top 300 players in the server so lowest is 68k right now this is one of the reasons why we recommend people being at around that 100k mark when you're going to go into a new server because that at least puts you at the middle of the pack now of course if you're higher than that that's great now let's take a look at strongest troop power same thing let's go all the way down 
to top 100, right? And strongest troop power that you probably want to aim to be at for your primary march on your jumper should hopefully be something around this 17, 18k mark. Again, if I go to different factions, you can see lowest is 13, 8. Uh, right, so again, I'd like to try and go off the top 100 because I think that's a little bit more accurate of a gauge for Lord Power and your primary true power to be at. And that's really the targets that you want to try and hit, right? You want to try and at least be 100k power in addition to having somewhere around a 17 to 18k power march. Now, again, this will vary depending on the server you're joining. So these are just general guidelines to follow. Now, let's go ahead and I want to show you the jumper that I'm working on right now. So, and I want to talk about some good tips. So let me start with number one, which is that you, again, want to try and get everything to level eight, but there's an asterisk here. If you want to maximize on your daily achievements, right, or your daily uh, activity points, right, to try and get that 100 chest every day, there are some things you can do to help this. So number one is you probably should slow level your buildings as an example right you can also do like the low sale time if you really need to get that out but we're going to talk about how you should be best utilizing your gold as well so anytime you are going through here you're going to see that for example upgrade one building and one tech right this is going to get you 10 points if you want to maximize this keep in mind that your resource buildings for your jumper really do not matter right now yes in my situation i've already got them to eight but this is something i just realized after the fact if i would have left all my uh resource buildings at one and then i just uh, or even if i leveled them up to three or four something like that and i leveled one building a day for my resource buildings that would allow for me to get those free five points from the daily achievements here to the daily missions and same thing with tech so that's what I'm doing now on the rest of my buildings and my tech. I'm just doing one a day because it's not really going to matter, right, for doing that because you're going to max out your storage because you only have a level 8 storage, so you don't really have a lot to work with, right? You could tell I've already maxed mine out already. Everything over that is, is resources I've gathered. So to be efficient, this is a good tip to take in mind. Now, the next thing that you're going to want to do is keep training always train troops right you just want to heal it's great because you're sitting here at t1 troops which train and heal extremely fast man it feels so good to save a lot of resources so always train troops and that's because you want to take advantage of the growth achievement which is the elite troops here right train however many you keep doing that you're going to be able to keep training right you'll see the new one pops here at 70k in addition to that you also want to just be going through the growth missions and taking advantage of these now sure you're going to get them for research techs but you can always wait again there's no rush on the research tax it's better to maximize those daily missions so you get those free 10 points that are going to help you trying to hit that 100 chest every day on your farm after that, again, advanced summons always do nine pulls like we've talked about. Items from the market. This is something you could start doing early. So my strategy on my jumper for my market is I'm actually just spending purple gems on basically everything because I just want to try and unlock all of my immortals. Now, this is my strategy. Some people might want to do it differently. For me, I'm doing it because every time I unlock an immortal, I'll get green gems from them. And then after I unlock them, then I know which ones I have unlocked and I can just start dismantling those shards to then go for my ideal primary march composition and then any of my additional marches that I want to load in, whether that be with Epic Immortals or other. Now, again, as always, in your Hall of Immortals, you should always be doing nine pulls, and you really shouldn't be doing anything besides that. Um, as far as when it comes, like you should never do these single advance. Only do the nine pulls for the advance. These ones, you can, you know, for the regular Philosopher Shard stones, yeah, you could just go ahead and do those as normal. So building's pretty simple. Again, invest all of your green gems, green gems in my opinion, into VIP. I know we've talked about this before, but I'm, I'm a really big advocate of, of doing VIP investment. And so I think it's something that, uh, right, is, is a really good focus on because you just get a lot of value from it, along with when you get to VIP 6, right, you start getting the Philosopher's Stone Shards. And from there, it just allows for you to keep farming that. And then there, once you get to 10, right, which is the big one we always talk about, right, that's when you start getting the daily Philosopher's Stone. That's when you can start doing those two nine pulls every nine days, which is fantastic. You also get good bo bonuses as well from VIP, like we've talked about before. Training speeds increase, so you can start hitting that growth achievement a little bit easier, uh, right, and then once you get to, what is it, VIP 6, right, you have the SP limit increases, resource gathering speed increases. These are things that are going to be able to help the farming account out. Ruins 
is another big thing. And you want to do your ruins ASAP, Rocky, as fast as you can, right? And like we've talked about when you're doing ruins on the jumper, you want to do two or three of these, however many it costs to unlock the level two. And then after level two, you do the minimum to unlock level three. Then you go in reverse order. You do all level three, all level two, then all level one. Right, and that's how you should be doing your ruins. Ruins will transfer over as well, so that's why you want to do it. Same thing with the seven-day Helen event, right? However much you've done in it, that'll transfer over to the new server in the event that you haven't finished, but you most likely will because you'll probably be playing your jumper longer than seven days. So these are some things to take in mind, right, when it comes to buildings, how you want to level them to maximize the daily missions, uh, how you're going to do the academy. Again, with your marches, right, you're not going to be able to unlock a lot of other stuff. Mysterium you can, you're not going to be able to get into the arena, uh, Alchemy Lab, right? You can still take advantage of that when it comes to dismantling, right? For focusing, as we've mentioned already. Uh, so you want to be upgrading your dragon. That's the other thing too, as well, right? In my opinion, all your gold really should be going into upgrading your immortals for uh, for your boosts, along with upgrading your dragon. I really don't think you should be investing in sailing. I think everything, in my opinion, really should be going into dragons and immortals. And then if you absolutely need to do a sail um, for like a daily mission to hit that 100 chest, then do the minimum one at 40k. And that really should be utilized as a last resort, in my opinion. Also, make sure you're doing your fortifications. This is another big thing, too, because you'll be getting your fortification achievement from the growth or, or from the growth missions as well. Where is it? Let me see here. Where's fortifications? Oh, wow. Never mind. Maybe I already did it. Oh, wow. Uh, okay. Ignore that tip. Totally thought there was a fortification tip. Uh, well, I mean, there was. I actually thought it continued. It did not. So let's scratch that. Uh, moving past that, uh, the other things that you can really do on the account is um, Well of Time. That's something you'll be able to advance in as you keep leveling up your Immortals, right? Again, as we've always talked about, focus on one primary march. And then... Again, always be having three chests going from the gnome bosses, right? So in your treasury, you always want to have three chests loaded up and just stacked so you have one going at all times, right? Similar to how we have this. Also, save your dragon keys. Do not use your dragon keys on your farmer account. Wait until you are able to get to at least, I would say, like gnome boss level four. Now, there is an exception here. If you want to maximize your chest, and let's say you have a six-hour, let's say you have a three-hour chest that you're running, but it's not going to finish until after you go to bed, but you've started it, but you have like a six- or a 12-hour chest waiting, you could use the key on that and then start the six- or eight, 12-hour chest to get good value while you're asleep or during your off time for a while. That would be the only exception. Otherwise, save your keys until you get to like gnome boss level four or higher, because the longer you wait to save those keys, the better value you're going to get on the chest for higher level chests as you defeat higher level uh, gnome bosses. Now, for the gnomes, when you're attacking those, the recommendation we always give is just go in order, one by one, right? So you'll do one Trent, one Baka, and one Roke, and just kind of go in order, you know, in line, so to speak. Um, and then again, you want to be using your action points and your stamina points daily. Stamina points are going to be in the Well of Time, right? And you just want to try and get as high as you can. And well of time. Once you start hitting your max and you can't really go any higher, then of course always do your max raids on the highest missions that you can because that's going to give you the most amount of XP, higher grade items as well to upgrade your immortals. And that's right, so those are going to be the two other big things you're going to do. And then outside of that, when you're out of stamina points and you're out of action points, you're just going to be gathering. Right. So the tip here is whatever alliance you join in a server, then what you want to do is you want to go over to an area they control. Right. Because you want to take advantage of the 50 percent gathering speed increase. Right. That's extremely important uh, because it will let you gather more resources over a period of time for however long you're going to be there. Now, of course, keep in mind, there's always a chance you can get hit on any server you're going to. But at least taking advantage of some of these tips are going to be really great. The other thing is that if you're able to get into a server that has contention or relics going on, that's another bonus because you might be able to collect some gold from the winning faction that is winning there that obviously will spawn those special tiles in the middle of the map here in the forbidden zone so that's a small little asterisk that you could take advantage of and then again right try to maximize your seven day helen event right you just go through each of these see exactly what you need to do and then try to max that because you're going to get a lot of those free helen sculpts from that as well now some of the events you'll notice that will double up is going to be the seven day event which is the seven day reward collection event and where am I looking here? So it's going to be for, oh gosh, 
thought I had it here. Maybe it already went away. But uh, anyways, it, it most likely will probably come back whenever, whenever the day resets. But there's a seven-day sign-in reward event um, that you will get. And that's something that, um, from what we found, will reset when you go to a new server unless they've changed it. And then in addition, a date like let's say you buy packs or something on a day and you go to the new server, packs will reset so you could actually double up on some of those. And then any for any seasonal events, rewards will actually double up for seasonal events if there's something going on when you want to reach up. And again, that's only if they haven't changed it at the time. Outside of that, guys, that's basically the big thing. You know, the other thing, the only last thing I will tell you is like the market, for example, and then I'll get into the spending portion is, right, try to maximize how many items you're getting from the market after you do the unlocks and the dismantling because you get free rewards, which is going to help boost your Lord EXP even faster. As far as talents to go down, just keep it really simple, right? I, I, I still recommend doing the same thing going top down uh, because I think overall you're just going to get better value. Right. And again, that's going to be doing your massive construction, getting this for your gnomes, which is experienced. Right. You could go into load if you really want to. Um, that's up to you guys. I just don't really want to respect for 200 green gems. So I'm just going to stick to my standard. I'll go into plentiful gold and then I'll go into divine walker for marching. I'll do the tech here for leaps and bounds. Um, then I'll do safe and sound for my next row. After this, I'm going to do training speed increase. I'll probably do Otherworldly Helper here on the next one, and then I'll do Storage, Increase Warehouse Storage Capacity, and then lastly, it's going to be Glorious Return on the development side. Um, now, you might not get that high, but just a, a track record in case anyone is extremely pushing. So uh, outside of that, the, uh, the last two things I'm going to mention is a farm account. So it's good to also have a farm account to your other jumper because you can farm honor. This is going to be extremely important if you want to help boost your nobility rank, which is going to give you higher daily green gem value that you're going to get out of it. And basically what you'll do with this is you'll, ha you'll hit your main account with your farm account. And then if you ever need resources, which you won't, then you can use your main to hit your farm. But that's really only when you get into the new server. So while you're, while you're jumping, you can basically use your farm account to hit your, hit your main account all, all the time whenever you have troops to spare. And then that'll help you to start boosting initial honor on your main, um, which is a great pro tip I can give. I, I'd love, I, I'm so happy to give to anyone. The last thing we're going to talk about is spending right the things i would really recommend buying is the four dollar head start pack which you can see i have done because right, that gives you the unlock builder also gets you merlin as well and then the 30 day gem supply pack on um, which you can see i purchased as well those are the two minimal entry level things i would highly recommend purchasing um, just off the bat if you're looking to spend some money now anything you do more than that is great Right. If you want to get some special bundles, right, you want to get, you know, anything else, uh, you know, whether it's Ramses, you want to get some Philo stones, right? There, there are some other things. The daily deals, I would say buying the daily deals every day is great if you're if you're OK spending six bucks a day um, right outside of doing the head start. And then the 30 day gem supply, even doing the speed up stuff, uh, doing the gold, some of these other items, too. If you just want to do some early stocking, right, you can. I would say the seven day supply I like because it gives you the 10 percent gathering speed. That's something you can utilize on the jumper. So it really just depends on how much you want to spend. But those are a couple of the initial buys I would recommend. Uh, outside of that, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, that is it for me here on how to make an efficient jumper account in 2021 in Infinity Kingdom and the value that they bring. Um, again, I'm, I'm sure I might have missed out on one or two things. I'm hoping I covered the majority and did a decent job. Uh, and again, I'd love to know what you guys think in the comments down below. Uh, that's it for me. I'm out. Peace.